So work is done on the system, so it's a positive W. It is not done by the system because um, it has to take energy in, so it has to have work done on it to do that. For exothermic reactions, they produce heat. Oh, and so when we say absorbs heat, that means that you know heat is a reactant. Um, so when we say something produces heat, that means heat is a product. Okay, so that's a review from our thermodynamics chapter. Um, but so what it means if something's exo exothermic, it's producing heat. It has a negative change in energy, so it goes down in energy from where it started. Um, its enthalpy is also negative. This is a vocab word you should know too. Enthalpy is H. Um, and finally, work is negative. Okay, so um, essentially, if I took something that was hot and put it in contact with something colder, the question is what happens? And so this is the zero flaw, right? Temperature of object one, let's say hot object, is going to become e equal to the temperature of the cold object. So the hot object gets cooler, the cold object get, gets warmer. My husband is very familiar with this process. I have a, I have a cardiovascular issue that means I don't get very good blood flow to my extremities. So my feet and my hands are always very cold. It'll be 95 outside and my fingernails are turning blue. And so of course, the best solution is to make him warm my feet up, right? So I'm the cold object, he's the warm object, his temperature goes down, that doesn't make him happy. But my temperature goes up, so I'm happy. In the end, we end up equal. <laughs> so that's the zero flaw. And that's also, we study that using the study of calorimetry, right? And so this is where you take like coffee cups, basically. And you can measure how, say, a reaction uh, affects the solvent around it. All right. So if it's an exothermic reaction, the solvent will get hotter. The reaction will get cooler by an equal amount. And you can measure that change in the solvent. Um, Chemistry cat is one of my favorites. So I'm just gonna let you soak that in for a second. Okay, so again, here's the laws restated. Every If you go Google the laws of thermodynamics, you're gonna see these rephrased in a variety of different ways. Um, so whichever one makes the most sense to you in a given situation is what you use. Basically, number one says, energy is consistent no matter what. Um, number two, says, hang on. Okay, fixed it. There was a glitch in the matrix. They weren't all one. Anyway, no, the second law of thermo just says entropy increases throughout the universe. Um, and finally, the third one is that if we had a crystal that was perfect, it could be at zero Kelvin. That's it. People make a big deal about the laws of thermodynamics, but to me, they are the most fundamental, most intuitive um, laws ever, okay? And the reason I think that is because there are things that when you, when you really think about it, you have accepted these truths your entire life. You know, if you're cold, you go get something warm and you're going to warm up, right? So that's just, uh, you know, a fact of nature. Um, so let's talk about this concept of spontaneity. We use this word very differently in science than we do in um, everyday language, okay? So spontaneous in science does not mean fast. It does not mean impulsive. Um, it just means that that particular process is capable of happening under those conditions, okay? Um, the reverse of a spontaneous process is by definition not spontaneous in those conditions. If I change the conditions, then I can change the game entirely. So if we think about ice, okay, we know that if I put ice on the countertop, it's going to melt. So that's when um, the temperature of the ice is above zero right? So spontaneous when temperature is greater than zero, we will go from solid ice to water. However, if I take that water and I put it back in the freezer, which is usually around negative four Celsius, 
it is suddenly and spontaneously going to go from liquid to solid. It's going to freeze. Both of those are spontaneous processes, but they occur under different conditions. Okay, so frequently we do need to think about temperature to figure out when something is going to happen spontaneously. Another spontaneous process, no matter what I do, is my house gets messy. Even when we're on vacation, we come back home and somehow it's messier. Dust and who knows what. So it makes me wonder, is there a temperature at which I could heat my house up and the, and the stuff will just get clean? I think it depends if like, you know, a fire counts as more organized or less organized than I was before. <laughs> I'm not going to light my house on fire to find out. Okay. So when we think about spontaneous processes, I just said the temperature matters. Okay. And um, which implies that somehow heat is involved in this process. So if I think about just like exothermic processes, classically in chapter five, we stated that things that have a negative delta H are spontaneous. That is normally a true statement. Okay, delta H's are really important in figuring out if things are gonna happen or they don't. Um, but it's not always true. So one thing that's not spontaneous but is exothermic is ice freezing. Okay, stick with me here. So most of the time people think of ice freezing and they'll think, oh, it's getting cold, so it's endothermic. That's not the case because to make the, the water cold, we have to take the heat out of it. Okay, so that's how a freezer works. It works by pumping the heat out of the freezer container and into your room, actually. So if you feel the back of a, of a fridge, they're, they're hot, they're warm, okay? Um, so dehumidifiers work the same way. They're going from water vapor to a liquid water. They do that by sucking the heat out of the water. Even in an air-conditioned room, water vapor has a higher heat than water that's a liquid. So it's got to suck that out, which comes out of the dehumidifier as hot air, hot, dry air. Okay, so when, uh, when we're freezing or when we're condensing liquid, you're moving the heat away. That means from the perspective of the reactants, the liquid or the vapor, it's an exothermic process. You're removing heat from that. So it's, it's giving off the heat. Um, at room temperature, freezing ice is not spontaneous. It doesn't happen. I can't remove enough heat at room temperature to make it freeze. Um, unless maybe it messed with the pressure. Maybe that's a way to do it. But under normal conditions, you can't. Endothermic reactions are generally thought to be non-spontaneous in chapter five, but that's not always true either. You did um, a reaction where you measure the delta H of ammonium nitrate, right? Ammonium nitrate is interesting. It, dissolving ammonium nitrate is endothermic. So you do this if you've ever been to the nurse's office with an injury, okay? And they crack up the, uh, the ice, ice pack and it gets cold. That cracking is a little vial of water and the rest of the pack is ammonium nitrate. Um, that occurs spontaneously even though it gets cold. Most of the time though, endothermic reactions are not spontaneous under those conditions, okay? So it makes you wonder why, how come how come there are exceptions to these general statements that exothermic is spontaneous and endothermic is not? How come sometimes endothermic reactions happen anyway? And the answer to that is the second law of thermodynamics. 